uh, epic <laughs> technical difficulties, <laughs> we are able to use technology to communicate. Um, Two devices um, later. <laughs> yeah, we tried every device in the entire household um, of Monica, and then we were able to do it. We It only took us... <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> 30 <laughs> minutes. Um, but we're here, and that's great. We're going to roll okay. with it. Perfect. Let me make sure that we're actually, it's actually working. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. This is the test of, um, is it live on the, on your end to the, it says live. Oh. <laughs> Hopefully the people say yes, it say live. It says live too. Yeah. I was getting, yes. Yes, it is. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. So we will get started. All right. So, um, we are joined today by the lovely Monica Wheat <laughs> of Venture Catalyst and Backstage Detroit um, and pretty much every other thing that is cool in the state of Michigan. Um, so if you don't know Monica, you should definitely to rectify <laughs> that situation. Um, she's an ecosystem builder, strategist, investor, and venture catalyst. Um, she has uh, over 14 years of professional experience in digital strategy, strategy venture development, um, program management. Um, she's uh, been, uh, she's the co-founder co of Venture Catalyst, which is a really awesome group that I'll let her talk a little bit about um, in Detroit, and then also was the executive director of Backstage's um, Detroit Accelerator. Um, and so, yay, welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm so excited just to see your face. I, I know. Feel like I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in so long. <laughs> We're both looking very quarantine chic. Quarantine chic. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna make it all work. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I guess maybe start by talking about venture catalyst a little bit because I feel like that's like a good jumping off point. Good jumping off point. So, um, venture catalyst is an ecosystem development group. Uh, we I've been doing ecosystem first initially venture, um, doing more stuff on the angel side, but then kind of saw the gap um, in just the ecosystem as a whole and started doing much more work on the entrepreneur and ecosystem side. Uh, and I've been doing that work for a little bit over 10 years, uh, but about five, six years ago, um, we started really getting into some of the larger scale events and activities. Uh, and so I've, I've had a relationship with Techstar since 2011. And um, we were running um, Techstars Startup Weekends. We were running um, their pre-accelerator, which at the time was called Startup Next. Uh, and we were tapped to um, Kyle Bazzi, um, who is a, a really good friend and partner of mine. Um, and I were tapped to kind of lead the charge on the next stage of, of development for Detroit, which included Detroit Startup Week, um, which has grown into a 10,000 person plus um, event uh, each year. Uh, and, and then to take Startup Next, um, I was part of the team that um, took it to its next level. It's now called Startup Boost. It's a global pre-accelerator in um, between seven and 10 cities um, that, that leads up to getting into full-time accelerators, follow-on investment or revenue. But anyway, we started doing these larger, much, much larger um, initiatives, conferences, things like that. And um, we just realized that it was a, it was a mighty, mighty lift. Um, it was, a, it's a lot of work to kind of put those together from scratch each time, you know, mm -hmm. because we were doing them individually. We work with tech stars. We were working with um, all these different groups. Um, so we incorporated, um, it was a, a, an idea of just something that I saw um, in other ecosystems. I was just trying to figure out how are they doing this work sustainably? Um, and I realized that a lot of them had a common infrastructure. And so I reached out to Kyle, um, Amanda Luan um, and Kelly Lapierre, uh, Katrina Turnbull, uh, uh, Toppin Kateria, and uh, Olivia Gooderson. Uh, collectively, we make up Venture Catalysts, and we are a large-scale ecosystem development group, and we put to, on um, infrastructure um, initiatives and focus on, focusing on providing optimized connections between people and resources uh, and people and resources and opportunity. And sometimes that, that results in a program, but sometimes it really is just a very strong connection or investment opportunity or business development opportunity or things like that. We optimize connections. Um, so anyway, um, that's Venture Catalyst. And we've been doing, we've been formally, um, we've been doing 
we've been formally uh, on on 501c3 last few years uh, and we're looking to do even larger stuff in the future yeah and for those of you that are kind of not familiar with like the detroit ecosystem as much i think like when i think of like oh who do i really need to you know like get feedback from on this event or in this initiative or in this thing that i'm working on for like research stuff um, it's pretty much like all of my like favorite go-to people then were like, we're joining forces and doing this <laughs> awesome thing. And I was like, oh! <laughs> that was actually um, on my pitch deck. I put it in Avengers, like we're gonna put, we're gonna go out and um, band together and do this. But it was um I think yeah. it worked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's awesome. So I'm like so fangirl about all, everything that you guys do. Um, so the first uh, question that I have for you um, is sort of as one of um, the biggest promoters of the tech of tech entrepreneurship in Detroit. What do you feel is Detroit's greatest asset in growing a healthy entrepreneurial ecosystem? So greatest asset, I think, is actually a couple of things. We, one of the, the things that I tell a lot of folks um, is that we talk about this all the time, but Detroit was like underestimated, um, undercounted. Um, it was definitely an ongoing, uh, ongoing battle, at least initially. Um, I would get on these national calls with um, large scale groups that they're doing 10 cities and we were invited uh, and people would be like, why is Detroit on this call? And I think that people from, from an asset perspective, um, it was that part. It was that the fact that people thought they knew what we were, um, but we were going to prove them wrong. And we've always been like that. We were like that before. <laughs> we were like yeah. that before Detroit was hot. We'll be like that 10 years in the future. Um, we were always bullish on Detroit. And I think that's a huge asset because that's one of the first things that a lot of uh, like that it factor that a lot of investors or biz dev um, folks will tell you that they're looking for. They're looking for that grit and they're looking for that innate belief that you can get something to the end because that will carry through a lot of the ups and downs, which obviously we're in the midst of a crisis right now. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I feel like that is true. Like people are like, I do feel like the the Detroit spirit really is just like, I will prove you wrong. And that is Every like, time. <laughs> well, like so much over time. And I do think like even, you know, like in the more recent data that we've looked at um, for Detroit, I think Detroit really is poised so in, in such a stronger position, um, even in the last five years economically that like, yes. I think that this most recent um, thing that we're in right now. Um, you know, Whatever we're in the middle right now. Yeah, I keep saying like this this situation, but then it's like, I don't know, I think that's a little sugarcoating the, the <laughs> um but yeah, I think that the any like economic downturn that we might see from this is gonna be uh, not as hard as it was in 2008, 2009 time frame. So Yeah. Well so that was be... The, the other side of too is we talk a lot about like those kind of intangibles, which is like the grit and the spirit. But then the other side of it is like we we have long been uh, um, like a tech focused, uh, manufacturing focused um, um, ecosystem. And so that is not foreign to us. Um, like mm -hmm. when, one of the first early like years and years ago, one of the first things that I did was like a pop up accelerator um, with the new me group. And um, we would go from city to city trying to assess each ecosystem and say, what were their strengths and what were their weaknesses? And like one city might have, you know, money, but they might not have tech talent. Um, and they might not have like a young kind of population that was willing to take risks. Um, one city might have the young population, but they didn't have tech talent or money. Um, I think for Detroit, Detroit has always had the tech talent and we've always known people who were coders and, and computer scientists and, and science and bio biologists and people in the medical space. Um, just because of the huge presence of the big three and the huge presence of like U of M and some of the medical systems and things like that. Um, we've always known that. We've always had that um, in, in mass quantity. And I think us, when we, when you gauge us, we always, we had the risk and the kind of the grit aspect, like we were going to make it. We had the talent for us. It's developing more of the monetary aspects to kind of help some of those pieces. And that's not just like um, investment and the, although investment is a part of it, it's definitely, mm -hmm. um, a focus on the, the programming and the structure that kind of seeds some of that. Some of those early investments and things that I did like way back when, a lot of the reason why they we, we couldn't get them to um, push on, there was no follow on funding for them. There wasn't a yeah. lot of, or easy access to it. We'd, have send, we'd send them to Chicago or send them to New York or somewhere else. And there wasn't like a lot of the infrastructure that's in place now. Um, but the, 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 te the talent um, technically um, is there and definitely just the grit and the, the people that are, that are having the ideas and coming up with the innovations. 
Yeah, and I feel like the, a lot of the venture firms in Michigan this last year had a pretty strong fundraising year. So I'm yes. kind of hoping that that will also help because a lot of them had kind of like closed yeah. up their fundraising like <laughs> before this <laughs> happened. And I was like, wow, good year, guys. And then, uh, and then like it was just like, uh, so I'm hoping that that too will really like help ease us past this transition period. Um, okay, next question. So um, in the 2020 Detroit Entrepreneurial Ecosystem Report, we focused on the evolution of um, Detroit's tech community over the last six years. So what mm -hmm. are you seeing um, shift in the community just in the last few months um, with the ongoing pandemic? Um, it's something, so we obviously host several cohorts per year um, through Backstage, through Techstars, through all these other groups. And one of the things I've consistently been telling messaging for our cohorts or our, our groups of more focused um, folks is that to be prepared. Um, and I think like, I, I think we've even used this in a couple of pitch decks as well. Like when we, we were doing some of the, like, this is Detroit and this is, you know, the opportunity kind of thing. We would talk a lot about like the fact that Detroiters have always had to do um, more with less um, than some other markets um, just by, by definition. And that's where I've seen people like honing in on, like they already knew, um, they already knew how to operate if they didn't, you know, they didn't have the, the right number of people. They already knew some, some of it. Um, they already knew how to um, kind of pivot or to, how to be creative and to get, you know, get things done like that. So I've seen a ton of that um, on both ends. Um, there is a, a subset of our groups that are, are tech focused, a lot of SaaS companies, whether B2B or B2C. And with them, they you know, they were able to double down uh, in some in, in some aspects to kind of get more of um, get more out of their get more out of where they're at. But a lot of our companies were some sort of hybrid approach. They had a, a front end that was digital, um, but they they were you know focusing or, or connecting um, physical products. And so for them in these last few months. Um, there's been a lot of speculation. Um, we have a really robust um, supply chain community here um, that has really talked about optimized supply chains and how things are getting to people and pricing and, and partnerships and things like that. A lot of those things have been in doubt for some of, the, especially those companies that had hybrid business models of uh, just trying to figure out. So there's a little bit of scrambling there, just trying to figure yeah. out like, well, now that the borders are closed and we can't get XYZ from from China or, or this place or this place that's, our, that's part of our product base, um, what do we do? How do we... Um, how do we thrive? And we've had other folks who, um, one of our companies, um, Guildform, uh, they are online 3D, um, 3D, uh, man, on demand 3D manufacturing uh, site. They've seen, you know, a lot of folks now can access them that could not have accessed them before. Um, mm -hmm. And looking to like, looking for ways to kind because they are very, yeah. in, um, very definitely, they are um, a, a direct supply chain that can be accessed online, which is, isn't the norm. So I say, I think things like that are ways where people have pivoted or benefited um, in these last few months, but then other ways people have had to tighten up considerably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I'll put like one little uh, graphic up. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> Let's see if I can work the interwebs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we've already shown that we couldn't so now let's try to like make ourselves look a little better <laughs> do good do good okay. do good <laughs> i'm like i'm like okay i'll oh, just ignore the fact that this call was very far away but that's all right <laughs> hmm. we lost emily <laughs> You could still hear me though, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, forget it. I, I'm not going to try that then. Um, okay, I was trying to make this thing larger, but whatever, we'll do with it what we can. Um, yes, but over the last six years, we've seen a 58% increase in, in uh, venture-backed startups in the city of Detroit. And so I think like a lot of it, it'll be interesting to see when we publish this report next year, like mm -hmm. if we see a drop off or if there's like new companies that are starting um, that are kind of like, you know, have been really able to be nimble in this situation or it just happened to like luckily have a business model that works really well right now and then are like, you know, off to the races after this, like you were saying with that company, it's just like, like, I think there are like some companies that are just like my moment. <laughs> I've been right. waiting for this all, all my life. Yeah, <laughs> which we need a little bit of that because a lot of us are like, my moment has not arrived. <laughs> so, uh, or some people are, so they're doing it. I, we've been telling folks that like, the early stage companies, we, we, 
we see that, like you were saying, like the for the most part, the folks who are really willing and looking for early stage companies to invest at that stage, they're still going forward um, for the most yeah. part. And um, where we're seeing more, and I'd be, again, curious to see um, how the report is in a year from now, is where we're seeing more caution is on the later stage companies, because obviously they're more due diligence, more... Um, more sensitive to, to shifts in revenue and things like that. Um, they're looking for those things as markers to, to do follow on rounds and additional funding. They're the ones that I, I think there's more concern about with our early stage companies. What we've been telling them and what we've seen to date to be true is that um, they're still getting the same, the same ongoing volume, but they're not, um, it's going to take them a little bit longer. Um, it's going to take, take them longer to close deals, yeah. um, longer to build those relationships so that they can close deals, things like that. But I'm, I'm, I'm curious too where we'll be a year from now and just seeing like where the numbers are and hopefully um, yeah. um, the good companies are able to hold on. And, and hopefully the, the ones who are a little bit more challenged, maybe they, they're able to pivot and become stronger, hopefully. Yeah. And I know that people kind of talk about like length of time of like fundraising in the Midwest yeah. is, has been kind of historically viewed as being pretty on the long, like on the longer side. Right. Um, a lot of people who are kind of like, well, I just like go out to San Francisco and I can put a round together so fast. And then, right. you know, like where it's like, if that's even longer, I'm like, <laughs> um, like okay. so what is long now <laughs> yeah exactly i'm like wait so maybe i should do a like a q a on that <laughs> like oh, exactly how long was it before and how long is it about to be um okay so uh what's something that you think detroit entrepreneurs need to focus on in the second half of 2020 when we're starting to kind of res slowly resume uh, <laughs> business to nor like back to usual We've been talking about that a lot. So talking about like the difference between, you know, the companies that have a six month runway and those who are more in the 12 to 18 month range. Um, I think in the second half after like we get a little bit over the unshakiness, it's, it's, it's kind of the, it's time to double down. I've been telling my teams for a while, like we have been going up, up, up and the market correction that we usually push people to really understand if they have strong product market fit or and they have a strong enough customer base to sustain themselves. They've not been able to get those signals. So they've been floating on a lot of information. So I think um, in the second half, you're going to see people focusing a lot more on um, the bottom line, the bottom line um, revenues. I think you're going to see a decent amount of them really digging deep into figuring out like, um, can they hire people back on? But was that, were they sustainable before? I think just shifts just, and this is obviously too, from the perspective of, me, someone who spent the first four weeks of this heads down, um, really in the weeds with these companies, trying to help them um, survive and pivot and get funding and things like that. Um, I, where, I, where I've seen them come over the past month as, as their, their revenue was drying up or, or changing and where I think they'll be like towards the end of the year is really going to be focused on like um, those business basics. They're really going to be. Oh, no, we lost Monica. <laughs> Um, Shane had, well, she kind of tries to call back in. Um, Shane, uh, Blee Master had a question um, that I'll get Monica's feedback on. Let me text her really quick. Mm -mm. Watch her iPad died. I think she had to end up like logging in with her iPad. So <laughs> that would just really uh, icing on the cake there. Um, lost you. Okay. Oh, she's coming back in. She's back. Oh, uh, wait, let me get you on. Okay. Now, I was going to ask you really quick. So um, Shane Bleemaster had said, um, what, what is the local VC community saying about the impact of COVID? Um, how much do they anticipate this slowing down funding? It's funny because I think he asked this question like five minutes ago and we were like just kind of <laughs> as, as if psychic by psychic. <laughs> I actually channel Shane very frequently. So. Okay, good. Um, I don't look so much like a hipster, though. Are you <laughs> seeing new opportunities in healthcare? Oh, that's kind of interesting. Um, I think both. So there's two things that we've been talking about. If you, for the most part, we're telling people to stay the course. If you were before not hardcore on doing some large scale streaming or telemedicine or health, um, you know, innovation or company, then jumping into it right now is not opportune. <laughs> yeah. um, just because there's a lot of folks there who are, who are, who've already got traction and are, you know, behind themselves as the best in the business, unless you've found some like massive um, opportunity that, you know, shift, you know, where, where it was, you're not going to be able to get that traction in the short amount of time. I don't think. Um, but I'm not seeing a lot of, I'm seeing a lot of folks who already were making strong bets mm -hmm. in, in telemedicine or in 
um, different types of health or med tech or different types of um, infectious disease and things like that. I've seen some of them just get people willing to double down, but it's not, as far as I can tell, not the time for, for people to jump in if this is not where they were before. Yeah. Um, I've seen, uh, have you seen um, Plum Health has been putting up these videos? Yes. Um, I'm like probably blanking on his name, Paul, I think. Yes, Paul. Um, yeah, Paul. So he's been putting together like these COVID videos, yes. like updates, <laughs> and he's, uh, he has kind of like an interesting model of like a seeing patients that don't necessarily have insurance and, yes. um, and like, he's been like doing a lot of like really great work in Detroit and elsewhere. Um, but his videos I've been like so obsessed with because I feel like he's just like really so, so knowledgeable and can really like help like explain a lot of the things that you're seeing with just this influx of information from like all these different sources. I keep being like, yeah, what would have happened a hundred years ago? Like, first of all, I'd be so bored because I didn't know how much to know like anything. <laughs> My kids would still be like climbing all over me. I'm actually surprised no child in their underwear has like busted in the <laughs> live stream. Um, but yeah, yeah, I definitely think. Um, and it's been really interesting actually to see how many companies um, that started in Michigan um, or started in the Midwest over the last, you know, 15 years that might have been acquired um, or uh, or have like some application that's now being used like globally to help with testing and exactly. help yeah. treatment and all of those things. So it's kind of like that. That'll be something I think that in um, MVCA's 2020, 2021 report. So like in a year <laughs> when we're kind of doing the um, when we're doing the research on, on this this full year, which will be really interesting. I think oh, like, that'll be something that might be good to highlight of like all the te Michigan um, Michigan technologies and companies that have been like really critical during this period of time and have done really well. Um, and then, oh, and April just said, April Boyle just said that, uh, that Paul Thomas and Plum Health were actually Build Institute graduates. Oh, oh, oh shout <laughs> out. I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, okay, uh, looking forward. So what is something that you're working on that you're really looking forward to for like later 20, 2020 or, or in 2021? Um, I would definitely say for us, so we've obviously been, this is our fifth year of Detroit Startup Week, um, which is more open access, you know, uh, 250 events over five days, um, kind of mass um, kind of movement of information and people. Um, but for this year, some two things, a few, actually more than two, but a few things that we were, we were super excited about for 2020 got a little bit delayed because we're in the midst of I don't know this <laughs> this craziness. Thing, um, yeah. but, but we're excited though, because um, this year we're launching Venture Week. Um, so Venture Week will happen in the fall. Um, it's a much smaller scale, but it's a much more focused um, five-day program where the goal is is accelerated outcomes. Um, they'll mm -hmm. be connected day over day for um, people across the three tracks, um, whether they're at the start stage, which is more ideation, um, up into like the beginnings of um, product market fit, to the um, seed stage, which is more of like they're, they're making money, but they're, they're those beginning growth stages, and then the scale stage. Um, each of those three tracks will have... Um, for lack of a better term, a mini accelerator, pushing them through certain steps that will help them either more formally validate um, products, more formally get um, people in front of them that they are pitching and getting their pitches critiqued and or, um, you know, a, a, what do you call it, assigning a new market and or um, doing biz dev partnerships where we're helping them with negotiation and all those kind of things. But um, we are super excited about that and just yeah. the way that we're, we're structuring Venture Week and the way that we're working with our sponsors for it. Um, we're also super excited this year that we have been um, working on for a couple of years, um, which is the 1701 Detroit Hub, which is um, a focused tech incubator. Uh, we've been working on that for a couple of years behind the scenes, just trying to figure out um, what makes sense for Detroit and what was feasible and really excited about the way that um, those pieces are coming together. Um, we're also, we've um, been, uh, we were one of the first, actually we were the first event that happened in the Ford train station. So we've been working oh, with yeah. them. Um, uh, we, we did the huge design thingy challenge there. Um, yeah, that was really awesome. It was awesome. And we're, we're looking forward to like just continuing work where possible there. 
Um, and then also with um, the, the University of Michigan um, Center for Innovation. Um, so we're just, we've got some exciting projects. And 2020 we, was a little bit more supposed to be happening between these months. <laughs> um, but uh, we, we pushed it, pushed a lot of it to the fall, but um, been able to do, Sharon's laid a lot of the stuff to virtual. Um, but for us this year has really been about um, building on uh, really targeted outcomes um, with the cohorts and, and making sure that they're able to get to like those next stages and acceleration and investment and things like that. Um, so for us, uh, that that level of programming and that level of the ability to focus on that level of programming in the midst of also doing Startup Week and also doing, you know, some of the, the more the startup boost and some of the more traditional programs we always do. We're, we're excited and we're we're hoping that we're out of all of this craziness sooner rather than later. So we can yeah, uh, get back to get back to some of those get back to some of those moments and some of that exciting work. Yeah, it does sound like Venture Week will be really cool, um, even if it's in a little bit more of like a digital <laughs> platform than maybe originally. But that's like really awesome. I think that like going through kind of like a one week intense program where you can like focus on little things will be like kind of just what we need at that time, because it's going to yes. be like, <laughs> and I know there's a lot of things like even right now, just even for entry point, like where you kind of like the first few weeks were like, what do we, what do we focus on? What do we, again, <laughs> we're inside of the, and we were like, at first I was kind of like, oh yeah, it's cool. We got Dropbox and we got whatever. And then after <laughs> a while, it was like, okay, maybe I should focus on a couple other things. And so I feel like by, by like after a few months, it'll be kind of a good to like kind of go through that educational steps of really like focusing on certain things in the business um, and pushing forward. So I think that'll be, yeah, so I'm pumped about that. I think that will be so cool. Yeah, I'm excited. We're we're excited, and, and we've um we're Detroit Startup Week this year is going to be virtual. Um, so we've been focused on that and and pushing forward on um both the content for it in June and then just some pre content to help startups now. We've been doing a ton of that um across the board with folks um uh whether it's mentorship sessions whether it's um just different workshops we've had a, we've um our, our we've had partnerships with different folks and a ton of different speakers um just coming and talking about some of the stuff that a lot of our startups and may not may or may not have like my background is corporate i spent you know good 10 15 years in corporate and we've been through layoffs and downturns and pivots and you know kind of these catastrophic things but a lot of our startups you know they they haven't and, and a lot of their employees haven't either this is either their first or second job sometimes and or they've always been in the startup world or, or smaller businesses so they're not used to kind of this mass um you know shift and change and you know having to pivot and having to lay people off and all those things so um i think it's a good time it's a good learning time because you need these skills you know to kind of you know be effective and competitive um business person i think the more that we kind of take it as that it's easier to take um <laughs> it's easier to it's easier to, to try to figure out what to do with all this extra time everyone has now <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's like I, I feel like i'm like okay well we can't go anywhere but then i'm like well yeah but the kids are at home and there's this and there's this and then you're like gotta be checking like yeah. the case total i've i've stopped checking that every day like I, after a while i was like okay, i did this too i did too me out. Um, <laughs> yeah so i guess well in this maybe on like a little personal note of like how you feel like you're doing and like you're <laughs> staying nice and safe and inside and i am i will say um i i've my my tagline that i've been telling everybody is that um I run around a lot. Um, I enjoy the work that I do, um, but I was traveling a lot. And I, at the, I was yeah. at the point in, at the end of February where I was telling everybody like planes just felt like big Ubers. I was just jumping on planes like every day, <laughs> I yeah, jumped I on <laughs> two, three times a week. And I'm like, oh, what, where, I don't know what city I'm in. <laughs> so um, I'm definitely trying to take a moment, I think personally, um, and just reflect it's allowed me to pause a little bit, things that were flying past, like I've I'm, I'm been able to take more time with. So I'm, I'm trying to take that aspect out of all of this this piece. Um, it's been tough because I've lost friends here. I've lost friends in other states. Yeah. And um, that part has definitely been tough because it, it still doesn't seem real. We're still locked in the house and it doesn't seem real yet. Um, but as much as possible, trying to be peaceful and, and enjoying seeing your face, um, yeah. enjoying seeing all the different folks that we've gotten a chance to talk to on the different vi um, different video streams and things like that. Because that's definitely um, good self care and good socialization. Because it's good to see folks, even though we can't move around and actually like interact. So um, yeah. even getting ready this morning, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm blow drying my hair. <laughs> I'm like it's like I'm going somewhere. Like I was put on the prom dress and like <laughs> um, 
but yeah. So no. cool. All right. Well, I know that you have like a thousand and one other things to do. So thank you so much for talking with us today. Thank and you for having me. Uh, I will hopefully see your shining face soon. <laughs> thank you guys. I appreciate everybody who took some time to listen to us today. Thank you, Emily, for having me. And hopefully we will connect again soon. Yeah, definitely. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.